Welcome back to Wigan. We've had three games on this streaming board. And we have one more in Bullseye. first round action for you before we move on to round two, where we can now confirm if you're making plans for the next Side hour or so. One. That a certain Peter Wright is going to be on this board after this. And they'll be up against Max Hopp. So board number nine, if you're keeping in touch with things on Dart Connect, is well, about to be transported to stream number one. But after some interesting games that we've had here on Stream 1, Dan Dawson has now joined us to let, let us know what's been happening on Stream 2. Yeah, it's been some interesting nice. stuff. I mean, it's been seed again, hasn't it? been so, so far, half of the top 16 seeds all gone. Uh, Daryl Gurney, we've just seen him come through against Danny Baggish. And, uh, interesting old game. Baggish missing a dart to force it last leg decider. It looked like another seed might be joining the eight from the top 16 who are going. But now that we're into the, the last what? round of first round matches, if you like, I haven't been able to quite absorb where all the the gaps and the draws are opening up as yet. We'll, we'll see how it develops 58. as the day goes along. Usually by the time we get to the last 16, it becomes clear if there's a, a certain quarter of the draw or half of the draw where it's very, very open. But what we do know 60. is that we might have a new world number one by the end of the day. Yes, very true. And Peter Wright's quest to have that for the first time will continue when this game is over. But Simon Whitlock is looking for his first ranking win of the year because last week he didn't pick up any wins. Brett Clayden did. He picked up one, so he's got that over Simon Whitlock 96. already. Will that play its part? But it's fair to say that Whitlock, without getting a win last week, did average well. Just shy of 98 for the two games he played, but that's 58. what happens when you draw two top seeds in first round action. Well, I mean, he could be joining the little Josh Rock Club, wouldn't he? Where you average about nigh on a ton and don't win any games. <laughs> I mean, I was just talking about it with Mark Webster. I mean, he's evidently going to be fine, Josh Rock. He looks a very talented young man, but must be a very frustrating start to his PDC career. Yeah, he's the Joe Mernon of 2022. Uh, none of that for Joe Mernon this year. It was 106 average, taking a part. Uh, was it Michael Smith? It was Michael Smith, that's yeah, right. It was a local derby. It was Bolton versus St. Helens. Tops for Clayton. 26. And he doesn't complete in six visits. That on the Pro Tour is an error. We did see in last week's final between the world number one and two, a couple of 20 dart legs. Whitlock's praying for a 21. Game shot. Blackjack, 21 it is. And he does take the first leg of this contest. Fifty-nine. I really don't know where where to start in trying to evaluate where Simon Whitlock is with his game. He, he's obviously been having for quite some Six. time trouble on the Pro Tour and, and putting wins together, putting sequences of wins together, but he still finds his way to TV tournaments, sometimes by the back door, 100. and seems to give a great account of himself. He's gone through spells in his career where he's not been good on telly and been brilliant on the Pro Tour. He's had the reverse. He's certainly in the reverse right now. But there's always that danger. 140. If you don't perform on the telly and it's not going well on the Pro Tour, you may not get back onto those TV stages. That's what I like to call the Kevin Painter conundrum. Mm. Because Kevin always talked about, I'm a stage player. I always find two or three more than my average on the stage. But he always had that niggly little thing in the back of his mind. I've got to get there first. And Simon Whitlock, you're right. European tour events are probably going to pay, play a huge part of his success or demise in 2022. So we'll keep a big eye on that through the course of the season. But the floor stuff where he's had so much success, that's got to be fixed. Yeah, it's a long while since Simon Whitlock was at a PDC title winner. He's thrown some world-class darts in that time, but it is all about consistency. Clayden, not consistent enough at finding his targets there, and he's on a one-treble finish. Whitlock already down to one. 
typical use of the southern portion for the Aussie. Game shot. And then the northern tip is found very well indeed. He has always been, like Keegan Brown, a, a, fa a favourite of using the treble 19 first on combos, whether it's 114, 152, 133. He's just very creative, and a lot of Aussies that I know love to start big checkouts with the same treble twice. Damo's the same. Kyle used to be like that. And I learned from the likes of Shane Titchevich and Rob Modra that these finishes were more gettable if you went um, for the same treble twice or indeed using the southern portion first. Well, I, I have to... I saw him go for the treble 19 there and part of me thought he was 95. going Shanghai on the 19s irrespective of whether he hit the treble first or second dart. If he'd hit the single 19, of course, he would have stayed there. 95 left, treble 19 for double 19. Because 100. that's certainly a, an element we've seen brought into darts more in recent years where players like to stay in the same areas of the board. They feel it helps with their rhythm, it helps them 58. find their targets more easily rather than flying down the board, up the board and back down again. Are you a big fan of this new camera angle that we have? The facing the board? It's quite interesting. I, I like, it. like it. It gives you an insight into the ponytail of Simon Whitlock. I mean, yeah. And very much like ageing fossils and trees. The further up the ponytail you go, the closer you are to some blue segments, which signify when he won last. I see, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred and seventy-seven. Well, two fabulous visits, 180 and a 177, both to leave doubles, but Brett Clayden might be worth absolutely nothing. Twenty. What an error from Whitlock. He's going to feel rather empty, especially now that Clayden has taken that 13 dart break. That leg has been stolen. But there were some world-class darts in that leg, it has to be said, and Clayden is back where he should be, on the throw. 100. Well, the Cambridgeshire man has been around PDC darts for a long old while now. But now on the tour and has a chance to really see what he can do. Is he really called Shredder? He is. Now, I was told many years ago that that's his, it's a nickname based about how he eats, but I don't know if that's true or not. What, has he got teeth like a, a cheese grill yeah, or something? Yeah, th I think if you got like a like a Subway sandwich, you could just sort of like post it into his mouth like a what like up? you were shredding documents. You don't really need to... But I don't... That might be that might be an apocryphal tale. I really don't want to know how it comes out the other end, that's, that's for sure. Well, let's, let's not think about it. 43. All right, so... Note to self, don't take Brett Clayden for dinner. He might rinse the credit card. Mm. But I've been around the world with Simon Whitlock many, many times. and 96. It's not like you can mistake him for anybody else. He is one of the most recognisable sports people in the world, bar none. I mean, if it wasn't for Peter Wright and his ludicrous garb and hair and everything, I mean, Simon Whitlock would feature on a lot more newspaper articles about darts just because people would recognise him as the darts player. How about this? Oh, 109. It's incredible how many times that happens when you've got a plum first dart in the bullseye. I'm not even sure why he was going for it. I mean, let's face facts. He's left himself on double eight with three Eight's darts, so no harm done. And if he takes this, it's a perfect riposte to what happened in the last leg, a leg he should have won. Game shot. And he is getting that break back in 14 darts. So fair play to you, Simon. Great leg. Really interesting stuff coming up in round two over the course well, of the good. streaming boards. I mentioned the right hop game. That comes after this. You've got Kim Hybrex on that board as well. But going over to stream two, if that is your chosen destination, 60. we've got Louis Williams there against Dimitri Vandenberg. And that board is interesting because Jose Justicia is alive in round two and up against Nick Fulwell or Ricardo Pietrechko of Germany. Yeah, Jose's been playing some good stuff since getting back on the tour. He was good at Q school. He's 
thrown some decent stuff. Qualified for a Euro Tour last night, I believe. 41. But he's averaged 102 in that first round win over Gabriel Clemens. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of seeded players. There's a second tier of seeded players who've gone by the wayside in round one as well. Ryan Joyce 90. beaten by Lee Evans. What a weekend he had last weekend. He's averaged 99 again today. Could well start to become one of two very tidy players picking up multiple wins without a tour card, including the very fancied Scott Williams, who I'm reliably informed is wearing his nickel socks to do. Ah, right. Well, that was so impressed with Scott Williams. First chance to see him in action in the flesh, so to speak, last weekend. I think we've got a real player on our hands there. I mean, Ford. Stephen Burton must feel absolutely gutted, having beaten Michael Van Gogh and reached a quarter-final last week, and he's the last name or the first name to miss out. Yeah, that's the pitfall 60. of not having the card. You could have the biggest win of your career in the next week. You're waiting by the phone, and that call doesn't come. Whitlock had a crack of two tops for 80. 50. He's left himself on double 10 with three darts, the exact same height as double eight, which he found last time. Game shot. And the height is good. So he's doing a really good professional job here, Whitlock. I'm sure he would have been a heavy favorite in this match, but he's proving to be very accurate so far. 58. As he is trying to hunt down a second round match with Stephen Bunting, who in patches down in his game, he looked incredible. 104. Well, there you see is a good 12 points in the averages there. And so probably a fair reflection in the scoreline right now. But an, 80, an 80 average is not going to get it done no. in this company. Uh, un unlikely. We had a couple of games last week where people did win with high 70s averages but maybe a bit of ring rust or maybe a few 40 early points. nerves for some green horns coming from Q school but when you come into the second weekend all those nerves are gone you're just trying to hit the ground and running forward. and Whitlock is just doing really efficient things right now whereas Clayton just isn't finding that first start to take the pressure off the rest of the visit. Well, we, we, I know we've talked about this before, but at what point would you say, at what point in the year, I'll just break off just in case, just in case the 161 goes. Oh, you coward wizard. You were going for a 125 earlier on. Bull 25, bull. Why would you not go for the 161? He's no Dave Pallet. Yeah. 100. And the, the greatest rejection of a 170 that there will ever be. Double 16. We'll go back to your previous point in a second, Dan, because it could be double eight for Whitlock. 24. But it isn't. 144. This is lifeline stuff here for Brett. Well, the wizard will return. Looking at double four, and there'll be some pressure on this. Four scored. We well, should have gone for the ball, shouldn't he? I don't know why he moved. He had a couple of belter guides there, but he gets them so close together, he's trying to use the stem and the barrel as a guide to glance it in. It didn't work, Game shot. and he has paid the price for missing so many doubles in that leg. Whitlock will be feeling a little bit salty after that sixth leg. He should have been 5-1 up, but now it's only a two-leg cushion. Yeah, he's... Uh this game is still alive at the moment. But the question I was going to ask you, Paul, I know we've discussed it before in, in years past, but at what point in the Pro Tour season 81. do you think everybody is settled in and likely en masse to start playing their best stuff? I know you're going to have peaks and troughs in form for individual players, but 57. is there a point where you think, say, by March, by April, right, everybody's played enough here, this is where we really find out who's going to be the, the best indicators for who's going to be good over the course of the year. In a normal season where we have our weekend players' championships and we have a little smattering of Euro Tour action. 108. Going into March, I do firmly believe that we start to see the real talents of the players come UK Open time. I think everybody coming through Q School and anybody who's played in European Tour qualifiers like they did last night 
they want to be ready for the UK Open, and that is still a couple of weeks away. This is really <laughs> creative <laughs> stuff from Whitlock. Creative or mad, Paul Nicholson? Bull. bull 45 bull, I would argue, while creative, is also 85. idiotic. I'm not a fan of that particular finish in this spot because Clayton could have easily taken that 155. Now, 59. I'm going to say he's going 20 tops, but the mood he's in, I'm not 100% clear on it, but I've got it right this time. Step to the left, slide to the right. And that's fine. Game shot. It all works in 15 dots, but 145, I'm not sure how many people you would see going for bull first. Uh, I mean, it's so, so Whitlock, so Alan Norris, so absolutely mad. But it all adds up. If he'd taken it out, I'd have gone down there and shaken his hand myself. 100. Yeah, that one would have made the 2022 highlight reel, that's for sure. Brett Clayton's in trouble here. And he did get a win last weekend. 55. But I'm going to stick my neck out and see he's not going to get one here because Whitlock is in a more advantageous position here than he has been in those previous two losses last week. Well, he did come up against two big seeds. That has to be said. But this is the pitfall of not being a seed. You could find yourself up against Christoph Ratajski and Rob Cross like he did last week. And he lost both times. But this, with no disrespect shown to Brett Clayton. This is a kind of draw. 104. It certainly is, although Rob Cross and Christoph Ratajski both first round losers today. Rob Cross only winning one leg against George Killington. 59. Yeah, Webby was really, really sour about picking Rob Cross to win the title and he was out about <laughs> 15 minutes later. Oh, so I, I, I picked Ratajski, so uh, well done us. Well, I gave him a mulligan. To pick another one, but he didn't choose anybody else. So right. give you the same money. Oh, probably get Johnny Cla Oh no! Well, Clayton's made a mess of that. It's Match starts incoming for Simon Whitlock. There has been some excellence. There's been some dodgy, and there's been some downright baffling from the wizard in this game. But double ten. Would have secured a 6-2 victory, but much as much like his approach in this game, he's not made things easy for himself at times. Very true. Double eight, the saving double. Game shot. Which comes to his aid. So this is what I like to call a brinksmanship try now. He's had darts missed against him to win the match at 5-2 down, but he's going to need big scores, and that's what's been lacking in this game for Brett. He just hasn't had a consistent time of it on that 60 bed. 24. Well, illustrated there. The Wizard with his fourth 180 of the game. Clayton, 92. he did have that 177. I think he's had one 180 of his own, but just hasn't turned up with heavy enough artillery to create enough chances against Simon 46. Whitlock. Different artillery this week for Simon Whitlock. He's not using Gigi's darts this week. He's using those big gap scalloped ones, 59. which are a work in progress, I am led to believe. And they've got that sort of iridescent coating on them. But he definitely seems to have gone away from those tapered numbers. Yeah. 